Hey, I'm back again. Uh, this is a follow-up to my previous video. I wanted to expand a little bit on something I said in that about the value of making short films and what you can learn from that. You know, when I was uh, becoming interested in making films as a kid, when I started making my own movies with a camcorder, and uh, even when I went to film school, short films had a reputation, um, and I think they largely still do, but I, I can definitely say at that time, short films had a reputation as being a training ground. A training ground for filmmakers who eventually wanted to graduate into making features, who wanted to graduate into working in the industry, who wanted to graduate into working, in, you know, quote-unquote professionally. And I've always felt that this is a little unfair to the short format, because, yes, that is one function to conserve. But I, I've long said uh, that I think short films can be just as rich as a feature, certainly in terms of their ideas or whatever it is you're trying to express or convey through them. And, but even beyond that, I do think it is true that shorts are a great learning experience, but not necessarily in the way that they've traditionally been thought of as such which is to say that they're not necessarily just a stepping stone or a training ground or a calling card for going to work on features or work in the industry. Um, where I see them as having a lot of value and what you can learn from making shorts is in terms of the relative scale of the production. And what I mean by this is you, when, when you're making an ultra short film, it forces you to distill your ideas down to pretty much their their essence. Uh, to make to to take what you're, whatever it is you're trying to say and do it as as quickly, succinctly, and as efficiently as possible. Now, I think you could say that this should always be a goal in many ways as a filmmaker, whether you're making shorts or features. But there is just a fact that a feature length film, you know, pretty much by definition, gives you more time to expand on ideas, to expand on your, uh, even just the pacing. I think there's a number of short films out there that could be feature length by just giving scenes more breathing room, for example. So I don't think that it's necessarily the case that, you know, short films have to be uh, simpler or smaller than features exactly, but you do have to think, you know, it is about whittling down the ideas to, to their essence, I think. And that, that, to me, is what you get out of a short, a really good short film. Now, what you can learn from this, I think, is that once you've done that, then it becomes a matter of degree in kind of expanding the ideas out again and how you present them. So whereas before something might have been distilled down to a, you know, let's say 30 seconds or a minute of film you can now take that and expand it out to, uh, you know, several minutes, perhaps. And by giving it that extra breathing room, it lets the viewer sit with the images, with the ideas in, in more, more detail. It gives them more time to, to kind of sit with these images or, or, or ideas that you're putting across. I'll give you a quick example. My feature film, uh, WFH, Work From Home, that I just completed partly grew out of a short film I made in 2007 called Block. Now, Block was about a writer struggling from writer's block and how he allows himself to get distracted. He's basically looking for distractions to keep him from having to do his work, from keeping him from having to write. And that film ran 10 minutes. What I did with WFH is to try to take that same basic approach. Now, it's not... I don't want you to think of WFH as like a feature-length version of Block, but it does kind of take the same basic idea of looking at somebody who is working in an environment, you know, totally solo, working in an environment where they're very prone to distractions or uh, letting their mind wander, in, you know, from, from their focus. And so I had Block in the back of my mind as I was making WFH. And one of the things that I took from it was to allow myself to expand, you know, on this sense of like, uh, what I'll call like almost like dead time 
in the film in the sense that it's time where, you know, on the surface, nothing is happening. You know, it could be a character basically s sitting, staring off into space, getting distracted, you know, by something he sees out of his window or whatever it is. And in Block, you know, I had to distill these down to short, of, you know, snippets of, 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 of film. And with WFH, what I wanted to do was to really expand that and let it, let it breathe and to help convey that sense of time. You know, when you're facing that sort of, um, you know, whether it's boredom or distraction, however you want to put it, you know, I wanted to really give that time to, uh, to, to breathe and kind of uh, let the viewer sit and experience that with the character. So that's an example of where I took something I that I did with a short film and and ex, ex, and ex, really just expanded on the idea and took it to a uh, to a to a to a larger uh, scale in some ways. But uh, even beyond that, you know, like I, I was, there was something else that I thought of recently, and I'll mention it here. When I was making my micro short films last um, last year. That was the most fun that I had had in making films in quite a while because I was working on such a small scale with very, very simple little ideas, little like little sketches almost. And what it did for me was it brought a lot of the fun back into the process. It took away a lot of the headaches that I had run into with trying to make short films that were a lot more involved and when I say involved, I'm talking about the production logistics. I, again, I don't mean so much the ideas themselves, but just the logistics of getting the things made. And that can really drag you down as a filmmaker when you start getting uh, bogged down in a lot of these production logistics, especially when you don't have the budget or the resources to, um, you know, to really pull them off sufficiently. Now, the answer to this is always, you know, figure out what you can do. So I'm not saying, that, I don't want this to be mistaken as uh, giving some kind of an excuse why you can't film this or that idea, but it is about having to step back and looking at how you can film this or that idea. And when you get, to, when you get too bogged down by all these logistical issues, um, it really does take a lot of the fun out of the project. It sucks a lot of the energy out of it because you're so focused on just trying to do... Uh, you know, you're just focused on uh, trying to do things that are really stretching you thin in terms of what you, you know, what you're able to do at that time. And that's one thing when I look back at the short films that I was making, you know, five, six, seven years ago, I recognized that I was really stretching myself thin in terms of what I had uh, at my disposal to make the films. So last year, when I started doing these really uh, very, very small micro short films, it brought a lot of the fun back to the process for me. I really enjoyed it. And now, looking at those, I, I kind of recognize like that, I had to take that step. Uh, and this might sound a little contradictory, but I had to take that step of like going very small scale, very simple, very casual projects made just for, pretty much just for fun. I had to take that step in order to really get into the mindset to be able to start doing the zero, uh, zero budget DIY features. Uh, because if you get, again, if you get so hung up on the logistical issues, then the idea of trying to do that feature length becomes almost insurmountable. But once you really force yourself to, to, to streamline the, uh, the whole process of making a movie, to allow yourself to have fun with it, and to just do the film the ideas that you can film then it, then it becomes a matter of degrees and so i had to i had to really take that step in order to get back to um a, a, a being in the mindset i think where i could think clearly about making a no budget feature length project you know and an, an entirely diy kind of production so you know, I don't want to go on and on and on here, but I do think short films can provide that as a, as a learning experience. I don't think that they, at this point in time, I don't think that features are, are any longer a, I'm sorry, that shorts are any longer a requisite for, uh, you know, if you're trying to break into the industry or 
trying to break into professional jobs. I mean, they can be, but I think they can serve another purpose. And, and they can, yes, they can prepare you for making features, but it can be in a very, um, it can be in a different way than maybe they've traditionally served. Um, because it's not necessarily about just showing that you can make a Hollywood style film uh, on a small scale. It's also that you can take ideas that you have that, that, that distill them down to their essence and film them that way. And then beyond, and then going from that, just, just to continue to expand, to grow the ideas, to flesh them out and give yourself the breathing room and the, and the added opportunities that the feature length format provides. Anyway, that's, I guess, just a quick um, defense of the short film and where I still see it as having value. I'm sure I'll continue to make short films. I can't, I can't quite imagine stopping making short films completely, even if I do primarily go in the direction of features now. I think there will always be some ideas that are best suited to short films. Um, so, no, I don't, I don't imagine that I'll you know, stop completely. But I do think I'll focus more of my time now on, on figuring out how to, you know, take a lot of these ideas that I previously might have done as a short and expand them to feature length. Anyway, that's a, just a few thoughts on that. Uh, hopefully, if you are watching this, if you're just starting making your own short films or even if you've been making short films for a while, I'd love to hear what short films provide for you, um, what you feel you learn from making them, and, you know, on those same lines, have you applied what you've learned from the short films to making a feature yet, or do you think that you will? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.